My Lords, today I want you to envision a future where the energy needs of an entire civilization are met not by depleting finite resource, but by harnessing the boundless power of a star. Today, we shall embark on a journey into the realms of speculative engineering and cosmic ambition as we explore the Dyson Sphere, a colossal megastructure that, in theory, could encircle stars, capturing their cosmic energy and reshaping the future of our civilization. Today we shall delve into the science, the challenges and the sheer imagination behind this grand vision of stellar engineering. But first, we need to start with energy or power. In the earliest stages of human civilization, energy was primarily obtained through muscle power, both human and animal alike. Humans use their own physical strength as well as domesticated animals like oxen for tasks such as transport, agriculture and construction. This muscle power soon changed to fire as humans realized that they could burn stuff. Unfortunately, the planet was made full of stuff that they could burn. Then, somewhat ironically, quite early on into our development, we realized that renewable energies, such as harnessing rivers with water wheels, was quite a smart thing to do. And as such, water wheel powered grain mills and air powered windmills began cropping up across the planet. Next came the discovery of coal and the industrial revolution that followed. Coal fired steam engines powered machinery and locomotives, driving a massive increase in industrial production and transportation capabilities. The late 19th century saw the spark of electricity across Earth, quickly followed by oil and gas power plants, and then in the mid 20th century, nuclear power via a fission reaction involving the splitting of heavy atomic nuclei, typically uranium or plutonium. By the mid 21st century, we were beginning to rotate back to the renewables that we had started using all those centuries prior, although this time we had a new player, the sun. Solar energy had always powered the earth, only now it would be harnessed by humanity like never before. Of course, the earth only receives a small fraction of the sun's energy, and then this is further diminished by approximately 30% of that solar energy being reflected back out into space by the atmosphere. It's safe to say that there is room for growth for capturing solar energy, which leads us neatly onto the concept you're here to learn about, the Dyson Sphere. So the fundamental question, what is a Dyson Sphere? At its core, a Dyson Sphere is a structure that encircles a star, harnessing its energy output to benefit an entire civilization. The structure, whether it be a solid shell or a swarm of solar collecting satellites, would be constructed in orbit around a star, with the goal to capture and channel its energy output. The idea is not just a technological marvel, but a bold solution to meet the ever-growing energy needs of an expansive and advanced stellar society. The idea was proposed by the British-American science fiction writer Olaf Stapledon in his novel Star Maker, published in 1937, in which he described a device in every solar system surrounded by a gauze of light traps, which focused the escaping solar energy for intelligent use. Several decades later, the physicist and mathematician Freeman Dyson was the first to formalize the concept of what became known as the Dyson Sphere in his 1960s paper, Search for the Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation. Dyson theorized that as the energy requirements of an advanced technological civilization increased, there may come a time where the civilization would need to systematically harvest the energy from its local star on a large scale. He speculated that this could be done via a system of structures orbiting the star, designed to intercept and collect its energy. He argued that the structure would result in the large-scale conversion of starlight into infrared radiation, and he further speculated that an Earth-based search for sources of infrared radiation could identify the stars supporting intelligent life. Most interestingly, Dyson spheres are used as a direct example of a Type II civilization on the Kardashev scale. Nikolai Kardashev was a Soviet and Russian astrophysicist, a doctor of physical and mathematical sciences, and the deputy director of the Astro Space Center at the Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow, and also the creator of the Kardashev scale. Kardashev's initial model proposed a classification of civilizations into three types, based on the axiom of exponential growth. A type 1 civilization was able to access all of the energy available on its planet 
and store it for consumption. Hypothetically, it should also be able to control natural events, such as earthquake or volcanic eruptions. A Type II civilization can directly consume a star's energy, most likely through the use of a Dyson sphere, and a Type III civilization is one that's able to capture all of the energy emitted by its galaxy, and every object within it, such as every star and every black hole. So going back to Dyson spheres, how would a Dyson sphere work? So as you're now aware, the main purpose of a Dyson sphere is to capture the energy radiated by a star, far more than we are now capable of doing from a single planet. So how would we go about that? It's obviously not going to be an easy task. For context, Earth is a pretty big place, and the Earth has an equatorial circumference of approximately 40,000 kilometers, or just under 25,000 miles, and a volume of approximately 1 trillion cubic kilometers or about 260 billion cubic miles. If you were to compare this to our Sun, which has an equatorial circumference of approximately 4.379 million kilometers, about 2.7 million miles, or a volume of approximately 1.41 times 10 to the 18th cubic kilometers, the Sun is approximately 1.3 million times larger than Earth. So if you thought building a ring around Earth would be an undertaking, consider encasing a star. Essentially, the plan would have to be to encase the star within a shell of solar panels, thus capturing all of the sun's energy output. It's worth noting at this point that doing so would almost certainly destroy the Earth as we know it. However, it's not unreasonable to suggest that humanity could simply move to the Dyson Sphere itself, as it would be colossal in size and therefore have an awful lot of living space. Creating the shell would require super strong materials with a tensile strength vastly exceeding any known material to ensure that the sphere would not tear itself apart. In addition, the sphere will almost certainly be gravitationally unstable. If any part of the sphere were moved even slightly closer to the sun, its gravitational binding would be disturbed and a part of the sphere would be pulled in towards the sun, disrupting its overall integrity. Bearing these three quite large problems in mind, it may be better for humanity to attempt something called a Dyson Swarm instead. So would a Dyson Swarm be a better solution? Some have theorised that a Dyson Swarm may be a more suitable candidate for harnessing the power of the Sun. Rather than encasing the star, a Dyson Swarm is a collection of many, far smaller solar collectors working together to collect the star's energy. Of course, it wouldn't be anywhere near as effective at collecting all of the energy the star could produce, but it would be far easier to build it, and considering the real-world energy requirements being far less than the entirety of a star's output, less effective would be just fine. Furthermore, a Dyson Swarm would allow for an incremental construction and adjustment over time. Additional satellites could be added to the swarm or reconfigured to meet the evolving energy needs of the civilization. This scalability would provide flexibility and avoids the need for a complete monolithic structure from the outset. It would also mean that you can immediately offset costs with immediate output, as your energy capture would begin on the first satellite created and thus becomes far easier to scale up. We assume that because of this it would also be easier to maintain, as if one satellite became damaged you could just rotate it out of use. Finally, and potentially more important for humanity, it would mean that we could still live on Earth, and we could have the swarm occupy a proportion of the solar system well outside of our field of view from the Sun. In theory, we could continue to use the solar collector's planet side as well, although given the efficiency of the swarm, it probably wouldn't be necessary. So finally, what are we going to do with all this power? Well, we build some really cool space stuff, and this can range from all sorts of things, from a Matryoshka brain, which is basically the universe's largest ever computer, powered by stars, to something called a Nicole Dyson Beam. This is a solar cannon capable of harnessing the power of stars into a laser, which is almost certainly capable of destroying planets, and who knows what else. Megastructures aside, perhaps we could even use it to power stellar spacecraft and explore the wider galaxy, although that may mean that we have to construct some pretty large batteries. Who knows, the possibilities are indeed endless.